again, if parents consider the individual risk of their kids, but on top of that, the risk of having to go virtual, it makes sense for them to consider masking their kids as a way to make sure to preserve the school year ahead. My name is John Brownstein. I'm an infectious disease epidemiologist and the chief innovation officer at Boston Children's Hospital. I actually have a 10 and 11 year old, and here are my tips on how to keep our kids safe while having an amazing school year ahead. I think that, you know, we look at the underlying transmission that's taking place in the community and what we expect there to be in terms of the surge this coming fall, especially with the Delta variant in the Northeast. And from that, it makes sense that kids are gonna be masking um, to limit potential transmission events that would ultimately mean that kids would have to go to remote learning. Throughout the pandemic, we've seen it's the combination of masking and social distancing that really generate our ability to tra bring transmission down in a community or a school. And so they should be asking, of course, understanding what the mask guidelines are and understanding if they're required, what points in the school they, they have to, they can remove their mask and whether those are safe. They should be trying to understand indoor gatherings or kids getting together in auditoriums or gymnasiums or lunchrooms and what is the masking requirement in those environments and what is the ventilation status uh, of the school? What is the school doing to make sure that there's adequate airflow, understanding what testing requirements are going to be. We are seeing more and more mandates across the board to support um, those who can't get to get the vaccine. And so our teacher is going to be required to get the vaccine with some small exceptions. And what is the status of vaccination in, in the, among the kids that do, are eligible for the, the, the vaccine? We had an emerging virus where we did not know a lot about what was driving transmission. And so Many families opted to take a very conservative approach to how they thought about transmission, cleaning groceries, removing clothes as they walked in the door, excessive amounts of cleaning of surfaces. What we now know is that transmission is really driven by respiratory air droplets and aerosols. And you know the other modes of transmission are just far and away less uh, of a concern. If we wanna give our kids a normal year and we want to try to get back to normal, we should be aiming to, to focus on those high transmission events. That's why the focus has been on masking and social distancing and ventilation, because those are really the places in which transmission can take place. We can't live in fear. We have to make sure to be flexible and nuanced as we approach a school year and recognize that it still might not be a normal year, but we should aim for you know the most normal experience, but have to be reasonable. if things change if we have to cancel certain activities, if certain types of events can't take place because of the level of transmission in the community. And so, you know, as long as we recognize it's not one size fits all and that we're flexible and nuanced, I think we still can aim to have, you know, a great year for our kids.